So I've kindly been supplied uh, by Airfix uh, with the 148th um, Supermarine Spitfire FR Mark 14 for um, an inbox review. Uh, so uh, very happy to do that. This this kit has been given to me. So um, uh, just to be clear, you know, I've not gone out and bought this. This has been supplied by Airfix. Um, and interestingly, uh, this one comes with um, an added brake, which uh, we'll get into and um, find out more about. So first off we got the instructions and it's um, uh, nothing really new here, it's uh, <coughs> Airfix is more up to date instructions which are very open and clear and I find um, uh, them extremely easy to follow personally. Um, paint call outs are humbrol as with all Airfix so uh, you have to kind of work out what we're looking at if you don't want to use humbrol colours. And here you can see running through <coughs> It gives you a good explanation of the different colours. So 56 back there is a sort of metallic colour. Um, when I say a description, it gives you the number, but um, shows the demarcation line there, for instance, and on it goes through. And you're painting it on as you go through the uh, different steps. There is a pilot figure included as well, and for that you would leave out the pedals. So, and the red denotes here that... Um, that's where the previous part is placed. So when we've talked about putting on the sides of the chair, that's how they look when they're on the chair, for instance, and on it goes through the uh, rest of the instructions. So as you can see, typical thing here with a Spitfire, building up the cockpit tub, going into the fuselage halves. We've got the uh, pilot going in here if, um, if you want to, and we've got optional parts as well for uh, whether we're gonna have the canopy closed or open, I believe that's for, um, and for Option B as well, there's a, a part of the top of the tail that is removed here, which is green. And um, the door here as well, uh, you can have open for an open uh, canopy, or if you're going to have a closed canopy, you need to remove another small piece at the top there. So just pay attention as you're going through the build to make sure you're not uh, cutting off things or leaving things in for your desired um, end result. We've also got the slipper tank here, which we can add in, so you've got to drill holes out for that. Um, and uh, a stand which is not included but if you want to have that you've got holes for that as well so again as I say typical stuff and then the uh, wings getting joined onto the fuselage and we've got then that's the lower piece of the wing and then we've got the top pieces of the wing as well and both A and B have to have the wings clipped so it's uh, a clipped wing Spitfire there so there I imagine is a scored line on the underside of it that you just follow through and that will cut off the ends and uh, useful information here as well trying to get the uh, horizontal stabilizers at a 90 degree a 90 degree angle with the vertical stabilizer and again optional rudders it looks like here and as we go through, simple stuff again, we're adding on the slipper tank if you're going to use it. Um, both both uh, variants can have that option. Um, you've also got some uh, also got ailerons being attached as well, and the air scoop and radiator. And then we've got um, an unusual step, which is uh, only specific to my uh, copy here, I'm afraid, which is step 38, where I have been given in my kit... Um, I have a brake sprue with a Kit Kat attached to it, which is a nice little uh, option for me. So it's a uh, help me as I'm going through the build, and this tells me how to then um, break up my Kit Kat. So we first need to take it out the wrapper, make sure it's all complete, split off one piece from the end, cut it in half, and then enjoy the Kit Kat. So that would be something I can uh, look forward to as I'm progressing through this build. Uh, then as we go on, we've got a few more um, parts that go on that just start to bring the build together, a few final details. Um, then we're on to the undercarriage, so as with most Airfix aircraft, you've got the option of uh, wheels up or wheels down. So running through here, that shows you this piece on how you want to, if you want to have the um, aircraft in flight. Failing that, we go on through with attaching the undercarriage. Nice to see uh, one piece wheels here, so that will eliminate the... Uh, join or seam around the uh, tyre detail. As we progress we've again got different options for um, each version regarding the exhausts so pay attention there. Then the prop goes on and we're really starting to look like a uh, late war Spitfire then. Um, 
And then you've got the options with the canopy and attaching the door, and I'm imagining that brings the build to an end. So then we go into our marking options. So we've got two in this kit, and the first is the A option, which is a typical late war scheme with the ocean grey and uh, dark green over uh, medium sea grey. <coughs> And this uh, particular one is an aircraft flown by squadron leader James Bernard Prendergast, uh, number 414 Squadron, Royal Canadian Air Force, um, at Lundberg, Germany, in May, June 1945. So presumably, it might be a stretch, but I am guessing this could be an operational Second World War one just at the end in May, uh, but you'd need to look that up. And here you can see uh, quite a lot of decals on this scheme, actually, um, and this is a more attractive scheme. I'm certainly uh, more interested by this one than the next one, which is um, a... Uh, High speed silver, I guess, or um, it's the RAF aluminium colour. And this is a later version, so this is um, still operating in Germany, in, in Buchenberg, Germany, in 1950 to 51. And it's the second tactical air force for the Royal Air Force, uh, number two squadron. And again, as you can see, that's um, a, a silver all over aircraft, and there you can see the markings. So, looking as we're talking about the markings, having a look at the actual decal sheet here. We can see that, that I'm finding that each um, aircraft, I'm finding that each airfix kit um, I come across is getting better and better actually, re regarding the decals certainly. So uh, these look extremely well printed and they're very glossy, which is a nice plus. Oh, sorry, no, they have a satin finish, I must say, it's not glossy. Um, and they're extremely well cut around these letters. There is almost no carrier film around the V, C and P there, uh, even in the centre of the P as well, which is really good. That's something that I um, always tend to look for. Um, the middle of the O here is cut out, and then it's joined together uh, with carrier film for the 1 as well. So that's good to see. Uh, this here is one whole block of carrier film holding that together. I don't think you could probably do much about that. And again, well, everything's in very good register, the colour's extremely good, and using airfix decals in the past, um, they tend to go down absolutely no problem, so I'm not expecting any issues there looking at those. And now if we just look at the clear parts, it's a bit hard to show on camera, but uh, there you go, you've got two different canopies, I think it's... Um, one for open and one for closed. You've got the windscreen and some... Uh, Blanks there as well, which I imagine are for a camera version, so for the side of the fuselage, an area to cut out. But uh, yeah, they're um, very clear, no blemishes on my copy here at all. Uh, so that's looking good. Now, of course, with a, re with a review um, such as this, uh, that you can't really tell much about how the kit's going to go together. We're really looking at um, what the details look like and, and what's been included in the kit. Um, it does seem, I was expecting quite a lot of this to share with um, the previous uh, Spitfire kits from Airfix, <coughs> which uh, started with the Mark 1, then the Mark 5. This actually uh, doesn't look to share anything of those. I can't see any sort of repeating factors. Well, I've built the Mark V and for instance we had two propellers and two nose cones and all that sort of thing on different sprues, uh, but that doesn't seem to be the case here, so um, this is pretty much um, all new I'm guessing. Looking at the sprue here, um, everything's very crisply done, it's obviously a very good uh, brand new mould by the looks of things. Um, detail is extremely good, it's pretty much what we've come to expect from Airfix, so we do have Pretty deep panel lines, I must admit. They are um, not quite as refined as they could be, but that's pretty much um, the case with all Airfix kits. So, you know, you kind of understand that as you're buying it. It's not really a problem, I don't find. You might want to tone it down if you're doing the metal version, but um, it should be hidden with the camouflage. On the inside, we don't have any um, obvious problems from ejector pin marks because all this is going to be covered uh, here so the detail we're only looking at is just around the door frame so that looks fine pretty much most of this is uh, blind on this side because it's not going to be needed so we can concentrate on the detail side so here that's the instrument panel which is quite good um, it does have raised uh, bezels so we've got them on the decal sheet to uh, uh, fill in the dials so that should look pretty good 
Uh, we've got a few parts here, I'm not quite sure what they're for. Um, probably something to do with the wing. Um, then we've got the parts here for the covers for exhaust. Nose of the aircraft and give you that sort of typical Griffin engine Spitfire look. And there's the uh, five bladed propeller as well, which is it's quite a beasty thing looking at that. Now, we do have a part missing. Um, it is in the kit, so it's not to worry, but it just shows you know, this is the putting it all in one package. You do tend to get bits brought banged off, so just check if you've got any holes like this that your part's actually in the box. So that's the first sprue with the uh, fuselage, and now we've got another large sprue here which caters for the uh, main part of the wing. Horizontal stabilizers, rudders, you've got two different types here, one's quite a lot fatter. Um, and we've also got all the rest of the bits, which all look very good again. I'm not seeing any problems with any of the moulding here. There's a good amount of refined detail on the underside of this wing here. Some nice rivet details coming in there. Um, the panel lines, again, they don't really look too bad, to be honest. Um, and in fact, there's quite a nice lot of riveting there. I'll see if I can pick that up. Let's see if we can catch that in the light. It might be a bit tricky, but there is rivets running all the way around these panels, all the way down through here, through these panels, along there. Uh, so it's, it does look very good. It's a nice amount of detail there, which is quite good. So we're coming on um, improving there. And again, everything looks very good on that sprue, actually. I think this might be quite a simple kit to get together, looking at it because there's only really four sprues. Uh, so here's the top of the wing. Again, as you can see, the detail carries through there. So you've got nice, um, clear and crisp panel lines, riveting throughout um, around certain panels as well. Uh, so that looks pretty good. And then we've got well, well detail there on the underside that you'll see when you get the two wings together. And then we've got one last sprue, which is absolutely packed with uh, parts very uh, tightly packed together actually and running through here we've got exhaust we've also got the wheels there um, the back plate for the propeller um, again actually all of this is all to do with the wheels so we've got different types of wheels all the way through we do have a pilot there with separate arms who does look quite a lot more detailed than usual uh, that's pretty good actually and then we've got the chair um, control stick, a few parts here for the inside of the um, cockpit as well, and some of the finer detail parts. Again, no problems there, can't see any issue with the moulding across any of this. Um, there's some good grill detail there as well for the air intakes, you've got some raised detail there. So to sum up, I think that looks like a very good um, new kit there from uh, Airfix. Obviously, uh, as it was sent to me, I've um, not bought this kit, so you need to take that into account. I'm not I'm giving you my honest opinions, but um, you need to know that uh, it is pretty much an advert for Airfix, um, which I'm happy to do, it's not a problem. So as I said before, we can't really tell about how the kit's going to go together, so I do plan on building this. I think it's going to be quite a simple build. I will do a build video, put it together, and obviously highlight if there is any issues. I can't see there being too many massive issues myself. So if that will be of interest, stay tuned to the channel. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe, give the video a like, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, and I must thank Airfix for uh, reaching out and supplying me with this kit. So I didn't ask for it, they, they contacted me, so I was very happy for that. It seems as though this one's going to be due for release uh, very soon, so if you like what you see, have a look in the shops and um, pick one up.